Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. After my great success of the original CRC filter, I've been working uh, for a few months now and I finally have the Gapster CRC Dual Pro. Uh, the original CRC filter was designed for my Gapster TD1 DAC. Uh, if you don't know much about it, I'll put a link in the description below. To create the Gapster CRC Dual Pro, I used a GLC PCB and they have a really easy software to use called Easy EDA. So the Gapster uh, CRC Dual Pro is basically for the folks that want to use plus 5 volt, 0 and minus 5 volt. It's easy. You plug in two 5 volts, one on each side, and you get out the 0 plus and minus 5 volt. Or it could be 9 volt or 12 volt. You can go up to 12 volt. There will be a version where it will go up to 15 volt. Uh, even this version can go up to 15, but the caps are rated at 16 volt. But you kind of want to keep a bit of more margin of safety. The hardest part was finding really good quality capacitors. So because I want something of good quality, it has to have a very low ESR. That's the whole point of this project. And finding uh, some quality components is, is, is key. So uh, I was able to find those Nippon capacitors that they have quite a bit of stock in them and uh, they were around 30 cents each. So that makes it a bit affordable, be careful. You have to at least order five of those. You can't just order one. So when you have, you know, if you need 60, 80 capacitors times five, you already need 400 capacitors. This is just for one small little order of five uh, boards. Imagine you want to do, for example, 100 boards. So you're going to need a massive amount of inventory to be able to do those kind of things. After spending a couple months sifting through all the different capacitors, and finally I got a big box and I ordered a couple other things with it, so it was pretty heavy box. And I was pretty excited to have a look and see how they look. So I got the box, got it opened, removed all the packaging. I was very excited to see all the five boards and beautiful looking. I designed it for people that uh, want to basically use it for the Gapster TD1 and also use it for other projects as well. It can be used for pretty much any project you want. It's basically anyone, anytime you want to reduce some of the ripple and you want to lower your ESR on your output and keep this as close as possible to where you're delivering the load, it seems to be very, very effective. Next, we're going to test the CRC filter, uh, this Dual Pro, and see how effective it is. I've got Rusty here who's going to help me do that. Here I'm trying a switching uh, power supply. This is a random one, like a low quality one that you see everywhere in your house. You probably have 50 of them here and there. So we're going to test this one out and see. So I've got, this is a 12 volt and I've got it connected to the load here. Goes the lid. Let's have a look. And whoa, we have a lot of noise here. This is a very noisy power supply. I mean, I've seen way worse. It's actually still around the 10 millivolt level, uh, but there's a lot of uh, going on there. So this is probably not something you want to hook up to any audio equipment. But even then, let's say you have something like that. And what does this uh, Gapster CRC Dual Pro do to it? So the same horrible switching power supply, we're going to, with, with the Gapster CRC Dual Pro, we're going to cover the lid and let's have a look to see if that made any difference. Oh yeah, it did make quite a significant difference. We're down to around 10 microvolt actually. That's pretty impressive uh, considering, I mean, this is not a miracle device, but to bring it down to 10 microvolt, that's pretty, pretty nice. The next thing I've got here to try with the uh, filter is this is the uh, basically the Studer 900 you can get from AliExpress. This has dual voltage and these are truly independent voltages. I did a, a good review and uh, this has turned out to be an excellent uh, power supply. And uh, let's just give it a try on its own first and see how it performs. All right, so I got it connected here, got the uh, light bulb off. So it's a little dimmer because it's five volts this time. And we're just gonna cover the can and let's just have a look to see uh, how it's measuring right now. As you can see, we're looking around about 10 microvolts basically. 
Some of it could be due to the long cord that's dragging to get to the load and that's always uh, not a good sign. If you ever have a power supply, don't have a long cord to supply, uh, I think, unless you really have to. So now I added the uh, CRC uh, Dual Pro here. We're going to cover it up and let's have a look to see if things changed. And yep, let's zoom in here. And as you can see, it's all uh, just below the one microvolt level. It's all nice and, and, and level. So it did make a, a fairly significant difference. So the last thing I'm going to try is uh, an iFi power supply. This is a switching power supply, but one of the good ones. I've tested this a few times before and always tested fairly decent, close to what they claim to be. Not exactly, but uh, this one's an older one. So let's plug this one in. Again, here's our light bulb dimming. And uh, let's just have a look to see. Let's just close the lid. All right, so let's have a look to see how this one is measuring. So this one is pretty way better than the other one for sure. Uh, we're looking around about five microvolt, but we have a little spike here in the 2.5 kilohertz region. Now a lot of it uh, noise is also caused by this long cable. Again, the same story with most power supplies. All right, so I hooked up the uh, Gapster CRC Dual Pro here. Now we're only using, of course, one side of it just for makes things a little easier to measure. And uh, let's have a look to see if that changes. And uh, yes, big time changes. We're completely below the one microvolt level on all and the spike that we used to have here in the 2.5K is gone. So we're pretty much back to uh, where we would like to be. So what do we get from all these uh, tests? Basically that the uh, CRC filter was working really good. It reduced the ripple quite a lot. It did a really great job on great power supplies that just have long cord and co picking up noise here and there. So it reduced the ripple. Also, this don't forget, we are reducing the ESR to 0.3 milliohm. This is very, very low ESR. And uh, the other thing that we've learned that even if you have a really crappy power supply, it's still doing a great job to bring it down uh, quite a bit for where it used to be. No, the concept is this is not you. I'm not really inventing something unheard of here. This has been a concept from a long time ago, but it's basically, I'm just taking it more to the extreme by adding a lot of capacitors, trying to bring that ESR really low. And now we have capacitors that have low ESR. So the moral of the story, if you are designing something and what you want to do, and you're using like a long cord, just can I add a few capacitors closer to the load and you should be able to get yourself a lot better uh, power supply. So it's just not any capacitor. You want to use low ESR capacitors. So the main reason I designed those two CRC filters is actually for my Gapster TD1 DAC. I'll put a link in the corner about a video where it describes a little bit of what it is. Uh, but this one, the small one, was designed for the 15 volt, and this is a new one now. It's going to be for the dual rail plus 5 volt, 0 and minus 5 volt. All you have to do is plug in two power supplies, either straight into the DC socket here or through the terminals. And you can also solder them as well. So you have three choices how you can get the input. Uh, the output, you can get it either from the soldered uh, uh, tabs here or from the terminal as well, screw in terminal. So you get a couple of choices for the output. So a quick uh, demonstration how this thing works. You have basically, you can have two inputs here, for one for each side for the plus five and zero five. All you have to do is just plug a regular power supply. Don't worry about the plus and minus five thing, just normal uh, power supply. If you're not plugging it into the uh, DC socket, then you'll see here there's basically uh, uh, seven terminals. The three in the middle are the outputs, so the inputs are the two on each side. Just normal plus five volts. You put plus and my and zero basically on this side, and the same here. You just follow the terminals where it says 
the, uh, the, the pluses and if you follow the plus and minus signs you should be fine. If you reverse any of them these will pop like popcorn, be careful, so it could be a bit dangerous there. So do not reverse polarity. And so you got the input either here or from the terminals or you can actually screw it, uh, solder it and I mean uh, in the little pads uh, as that are provided. These can accommodate up to 13 gauge uh, wire. Now, the other thing now, you have some jumpers here. The, basically, it's considered as two separate uh, rails here. There are two jumpers on each side. Uh, if you basically close them both, you have zero resistance, so there's no R, it becomes just a, a filter, uh, like a, a capacitor. If you just put one on, you're gonna have half an ohm of, of resistance, and if you have them both out, you'll have one ohm of resistance. Also, the, uh, it's good to have at least half an ohm because sometimes a lot of power supplies cannot handle a shock where you basically give them all these capacitors uh, such low SR to charge so they might uh, can short or some get damaged. So it's important to have at least one jumper out to have at least half an ohm. There are 33 capacitors here. These are 270 microfarad, 16 volt rated. They are 10 milliohm of ESR each. So if you divide that by 33, you're gonna get the 0 0.3 milliohms. There is a film capacitor here. There's a couple smaller capacitors and another small capacitor here. In here you get the resistors for the R part and uh, there's two uh, fill, uh, reservoirs of big capacitors as well at the beginning. If you want to design these yourself, you can follow my video. I'll put a link for it in the description below. And you can extrapolate from there and build something bigger. That video is about the smaller CRC filter. But all you have to do is make the board bigger and add more capacitors of your choosing. Now, how does this incorporate in the Gapster TD1 DAC? I'm going to show you how you can incorporate the uh, CRC filter and the CRC Dual Pro here into your Gapster TD1 project in combination with Ian Canada Streamer. So how do you wire your Gapster TD1 to actually fit in nicely with your CR Gapster CRC Dual Pro? So what you want to do is when you're soldering the wires, you want to keep them short. These are three inches. Uh, only because it's pretty close to the board. There is not you don't need a big long wires. Remember, shorter is always better. And what I suggest is you use three different color coded uh, wires. One is red for the plus five, a green one for the zero, and a black one for the minus five volt. Now this way you don't have too much confusion. The other thing that you want to do is you do not want to mount the wires where they stick out like this towards the bottom. You want them bent so they actually are flush and they use a lot less room and this way you can stack things a lot tighter. So what I suggest you do is when you cut your wires just bend the end of it a little bit. The exact measurements for the wire should be three inches for the zero plus and minus five volts. So it's roughly around uh, eight centimeters. And for the long 15 volt ones, it should be six inches for the red one, which is roughly around 15 centimeters and six inches and a quarter for the black one. Just a little bit, you'll know, I'll show you why a little later. Here I am using 13 gauge wire. I do not suggest you use anything bigger than that because it's just going to be so hard to bend those wires. So 13 gauge or 15 or 16 gauge would be probably ideal. Here you can see on the back that's the way they're soldered. They're nice and flat and pretty much flush. So the easiest way is to have the uh, TD1 on its back like that. And then what you do, you route your wires just in front of the standoff here and you are going to put in your uh, your plus first, probably easiest to do it that way. Just bend it about 90 degree angle like that. And you're gonna drop the box here and then tighten. Always make sure you unscrew and drop the box all the way down. Otherwise you won't be getting it in the right place. And this is the ground. Here you can see how they're bent here on, the, on an angle right there. 
and, uh, and they go in front of the standard. This makes it the neatest way to mount these. This next thing you want to do is you are going to bring your CRC filter and put it on top and uh, you're going to use 20 millimeter standoffs. If they're not uh, lining up perfectly because this one is uh, the board is designed for 2.5 and 3 millimeters so you just loosen them up don't tighten them up too much from the beginning and you might have some time to wiggle them up a little bit because sometimes the bottom one could be shifted due to the uh, position being 2.5 and there we go we got the uh, CRC uh, on top and now you're gonna put in the three plus zero and minus five volt in the terminal. What I strongly suggest is to put like maybe a red marker on the plus, a black marker on the minus, and this way you don't accidentally put them in the wrong place. Again, we are going to drop the box all the way down. And uh, just gonna tighten them all. So everything lines up perfectly. If you measure the wires to be three inches long and the other one six and six and a quarter, you'll see how they all perfectly line up. And all you have to do now is just bend this all around and bring it over and just it will fit right on top. You just have to now squish the wires down a little bit and you can just put your screws on top or another set of standoffs. And here you can see the wires are all wired and they look nice and neat. So the CRC filters were designed for people that do not want to mess around with uh, transformers and big supercapacitors and all this kind of stuff. So that's why it's made to be very simple. In this case I'm using a Studer Dual here which is a uh, this is an imitation from AliExpress that uses a dual 5 volts and beside it is a 15 volt version. Now some of you may want to just use two of these 5 volt iFi's or this 15 volt iFi as well but for the same price I think this is a better quality uh, power supplies. They're way more stable and you don't have to worry about the problem with the high frequency noise. Labeling, as I mentioned, is very important. Same like you should label the pluses and the minus with some felt pens. I like to usually label my 15 volt supply because they all use the same kind of size jack. And you can accidentally put that in the 5 volt and shorten uh, thing. So if you label that 15 volt, it will be less likely to, for you to do that. Now just remember, this goes into the CRC on the back. That's for the 15 volt one. And for the 5 volts, it's very simple. There's one that goes in here and the other one goes in here. So just really simple. So if you're using a couple of these Studer imitation ones from AliExpress and you're going to have the really decent power supply with the CRC filter, you're going to get really close to that super capacitor level without messing around with more dangerous products. And here we go, we got music, it's all singing. So you can see here the uh, dual CRC, and this is the regular CRC, and you got our Gapster TV1 all living happily together. All the wires are neat. So just simple, plug in your 5 volts, your 15 volts. If you're looking to buy the Gapster CRC Dual Pro or the regular CRC filter, you can find those on my website, gapster.ca. In the corner in here, I'm going to put uh, basically a video where I talked about the regular CRC file and how it was designed and how all the uh, uh, basic steps and every little detail is discussed in there. In this corner here, I'm going to put a link about my Gapster TD1 DAC for those who don't know much about it. There'll be a speaker in the middle. If you'd like to subscribe, my Patreon is in the description below. Take care and I hope to see you again.